I'm Andy Lark, so I uh, run corporate marketing at Dell Computer, I'm responsible for all the communications effort, and then uh, our social media efforts, and then also Dell.com, which is the largest e-commerce site in the world. What do you do in a, in a social media space? We have a, a, a lot going on in the social media space. First of all, we have a, a quite a large dedicated social media team that is obviously involved with our blog sites uh, and other people's blog sites. We have teams dedicated to social media uh, properties such as Twitter, uh, but probably most importantly are our innovations around how we're listening to customers. So our idea storm site, and then using social media technologies to power uh, the way we engage with customers. So uh, a good example of that is we have something now called customer certified solutions. So that's where a customer goes in and sees another customer has a problem and maybe a message board and says, oh, here's what you do to fix that problem. And then that customer can vote on it and say, hey, that was a really good answer to my question. And so we've actually got customers working with each other to solve common problems, then use social media technologies to distribute that information, to enable it to be ranked and subject to peer review and things like that. So we have a, just a mountain going on on the social media front. Do you compare what you're doing in a social media space and on more of a traditional PR marketing space? Uh, I would say that the social media stuff for us is probably probably the most important thing we do today from a marketing standpoint. I think a lot of the other elements of the marketing mix are sort of becoming more and more transactional and more and more tactical in nature. The social media stuff for us is much more strategic and it's it's not just about you know blogging or wikis or RSS or any of that stuff. It's about how do you use listening and coalescing conversations that are going on to kind of inform everything you're doing, right? So whether it's product design, product innovation, whether it's customer service and support, how do you actually use social media to power the fundamentals of the business? That's what that's what we're focused on. So we, you know, for us, it's really it changes everything. You're exposing yourself a lot more than you ever have in the past, and. Frankly, the problem never is the competition of the customer, it's, it's normally the people who have a vested interest in your information. So for instance, you know, we will decide to do a big NDA presentation to a thousand customers, say. Something we wouldn't do in the past, but being more transparent and trying to open to listening and dialogue, we'll do that. Someone will grab screenshots, send that to a gadget, suddenly gets published. Yeah, you really piss off a lot of journalists at that point who feel that you're kind of just leaking stuff to a particular site when you're not. You're just being a lot more transparent with your customers about what's going on. So, um, you know, you expose yourself to a lot of stuff, but frankly, the, um, the risks and the downside are really insignificant when compared to the rewards and the upside. What do you think is the role of the traditional media, the Wall Street Journal, the Newsweek? And well, I mean, there are, I don't think there's any such thing as traditional media anymore. I think it's a complete non sequitur. I think there are the media that are going to go out of business pretty soon because they failed to evolve their business model sufficiently. Um, there are the media out there that don't need to evolve their business model because they have such a status in the general ebb and flow of information. Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Le Mans, you know. Um, but there are others out there who have no hope unless they be engage fully with the community, become more crowdsourced orientated, really um, really understand where the market's going. So I don't I don't really ever look at it as traditional media because I think that that notion was killed a while ago and people are just there's a group out there that have failed to come to terms with it, but uh, there are others that have embraced it completely and are doing really cool stuff. A good example would be, say, the BBC. You know, um, I can't t tell you the number of times I, I meet a BBC reporter and their first question is, can I podcast this? You know, and versus, say, regional newspapers in the US who still, uh, they turn up with a notepad and they want to take notes, you know, and you're kind of like, you just don't get it that, that the content I'm giving you is the asset, not the translation of it, you know. So the uh, campaigns, how the marketing or advertising, are going to go online for Dell versus Oh online. yeah, we will be vectored, a, a, a vast majority of our stuff will be online. The other interesting thing we're starting to test is using more crowdsourced content to power our ads. So a good example of that would be we hosted this large competition in Facebook, we thought it would be small, it turned out to be pretty large, where we used a really cool little application called Graffiti, and we asked people to draw what green meant to them. So if you go to regeneration.org or you go to the Regeneration pages in Facebook, 
um, you'll see these really amazing drawings and you hit pl replay, you can replay the person drawing them, they're like really addictive. And um, we're now using all of that content in our digital ads. So rather than paying some agency to draw pretty pictures and take photos, we're using the content that our community is creating with us in our ads. And you know, so, so the power of the social medium to change the production process even in advertising is really, really substantial.